this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of explain the journal entry for issuing bonds at a premium and the journal entries for interest and amortization. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. If we see an essay question or discussion question like this and we don't know where to start, we could start with just thinking about bonds. What are bonds? Uh, can we define bonds? And hopefully that'll get us going so that we can expand from there. So when we think about bonds, we are the ones issuing the bonds, and that means that we're issuing them and we're going to get money. So we're issuing the bonds, we're going to receive money for it. The bond itself is just going to be a promise to repay and give the rent on the money that we're receiving the interest payments. So the bond's going to be a promise to pay back some principal amount and interest at the end of the bond or, or some stated amount on the bond, the face amount on the bond, plus any interest on the bond. So that's where we start. And then we could think about, I would think about the journal entries. So it's asking us for the journal entry here. So we can just start to construct it and we can think, well, what we're trying to do when we have the bond is get cash. So if that's the case, when we issue the bond, we're going to debit cash. It's going to be a very sloppy uh, journal entry over here, but uh, we're going to debit cash for some amount. And then we're going to have the bond payable that we're going to pay back, which is a long, which is a liability. And those two things are pretty straightforward, typically. The bonds, you can always think of it as like a thousand. Often, they're issued in terms of thousands. And then the question is, you know, what is a premium or a discount? In this case, we're talking about a premium. And what does that mean? I always think about it from the sense of if I'm the, the purchaser, when I think about these discounts or premiums. So in other words, if we had this bond here and we had it's a thousand dollar bond, that's kind of like the sticker price on the bond. And if it was a 10% uh, interest rate bond, then uh, that's going to be the interest rate. Now, if I paid anything less than 1000 I would call that a discount. We bought it for less than the sticker price, less than what's on the bond. If we paid anything more than the $100,000, we'd call it a premium. In this case, we're paying more. So we're going to say we paid something more like 1100 and that's what results in the premium. So here's kind of like the journal entry we would have if we would have purchased something. Now, notice how useful it is just to make up numbers. These numbers are totally made up. But it's useful to write down the journal entry. And if you have an essay question, possibly make up some numbers and write down the journal entry because then it's just a matter of describing uh, the journal entry. So if, we, if we're going to issue the bond, uh, when we issue the bond, we're going to debit cash because we issued the bond. We're going to put the bond on the books for, for whatever the face amount of the bond is. And then if it's issued at a premium, we got more cash than, uh, than is on the face amount of the bond. And we would then have to credit the premium. And that credit, do we know if we need a debit or credit? That's usually a confusing component because to know if it's going to be a debit or credit versus a bond uh, premium versus a discount. Then we can get into, well, why would that happen? So why, why would it be that uh, someone would pay, uh, in this case, someone's paying us more than the face amount of the bond? And so this is always going to be the question with any kind of bond uh, issuance. And we just got to understand this to some degree. And that's going to be the fact, well, it has to do with the interest rates. This interest rate can't change and the amount can't change as it would if it was a, a note. We would change basically, uh, if like a loan, we would change the interest rate. That's what we would haggle over. But we can't change the interest rate here. It's fixed. So whatever interest rates on the market rate, we have the market rate, then is going to determine whether it's going to be a, a premium or, an, uh, or a discount. Why would that be? Well, if, if the market rate over here was 12%, then well, what happens is this, if I'm this person, I'm thinking of loaning money uh, to the business, giving $1,000 over here, why would we do that? Because we want to get rent on our money. We want to get a return. And if we can give our money somewhere else and get 12% on a return, then we're not going to give our money to, uh, to the business unless the business says, well, I'll give you this $1,000 bond. I'll give you $1,000 at the end plus 10% interest. I know that's below the market rate. Therefore, I'll accept something less. 
so that would be a discount. A premium, on the other hand, would be if the market rate was only 5% and this person could only go somewhere else and get 5% on the, on the 1,000, then they're going here, they're, they're gonna say, yeah, I wanna buy this bond for $1,000. And we're gonna say no, because we know that we're issuing 10%, that's what's on the bond, and we know that you can only get 5% elsewhere. So that means that we're gonna have to issue it for something more. Uh, so that means we want something more. In this case, we're saying 110. Now, what is that more? Uh, how would you know what that more is? Uh, it, it would be, you, you'd have to present value the future cash flow payments to figure it out. In other words, uh, the stream of payments that we're going to have here is going to be uh, one, uh, the 1,000 at the end. And then we could say that there's going to be some series of payments, which are going to be 10% of the, of the 1,000, some periodic payments, semi-monthly or semi-yearly or yearly payments. If we present value those, those payments at the market rate, then that's going to give us the present value and that's what will differ that's what will determine that difference but we don't need to do that calculation most likely in an essay question like this but we could uh, explain that what would happen then of course now we have this credit on the books for a premium of a hundred dollars and we're gonna to have to deal with that throughout the, the the time periods so throughout the time periods what's going to happen is we're going to pay interest and that interest you can think of it as pretty straightforward we're just going to pay whatever the face amount is times the interest and then we'll we'll adjust it for whatever time period we're dealing with if it's semi month semi yearly or um, or yearly or whatnot we'll we'll enter that journal entry which will be a debit to interest expense and a credit to um to cash that's the actual cash we'll pay but we're also going to have to deal with this premium that we're going to have to amortize over the life of of this um of this bond so there's a couple different ways we can do that. We could think about it in a separate journal entry and think about it that way. And we would say, well, what's gonna happen with the, with the bond premium? We're, we could, the easy way to do it is to just uh, amortize it over the same life of the bond. It's a 15 year bond with uh, semi-annual payments over 30 years, we'll amortize this. And we could just take the straight line method, which would just take that 100, divide it by the 30, and that would mean that we're going to allocate uh, that portion, whatever we get, uh, over the life uh, to interest expense. So the journal entry there, since this is a credit, when it goes on the books, we'd have to do the opposite. We'd have to debit the uh, premium, and then we would credit interest expense, which is a little bit unusual because then we would credit interest expense here, which would make interest expense go down. But note what's really happening is we're, we're netting it out against the payment that we're, we're making. We're making the payment at whatever the rate is on the bond and, um, and we're netting out the premium. Why does that make sense? Because the premium is really a result of the difference between these two rates. Now that would be the simple method of amortizing. We could use the, the effective method would be the preferred method to figure out what the amount that we should be recording each time period the amortization of this premium and that would be uh, using more of a fixed method it'd be similar to us uh, using using an amortization table when we uh, figure out the amount of loan payments to be allocated between interest and expense and the effective method is more precise because it's going to be better lined up to the matching principle so uh, it should be more precise. Now, if the difference between the effective method and the um, straight line method is not material, it's very small, doesn't affect decision making, then we can de decide which one we want to use, but the preferred method is the effective method. But in essence, the two journal entries we're going to have then, you're going to sum this up, this will be the journal entry to put uh, the bond on the books. And then we, we're going to have a journal entry that we could do in two journal entries or oftentimes it's combined into one, which will do basically two things. It's going to record the interest expense that we pay plus the amortization of this premium. And that's going to, that's going to include uh, a debit to interest expense. It's going to include a debit to the premium for whatever amortization method we're going to use each period. And then we're going to credit the cash that we're going to pay. And that's going to be repeated for however many times that we have the, the loan payments for. By the end of the loan, we'll be left with just the, the bond payable because the premium will go away. And then we'll finally pay off the bond payable 
and we'll do that by crediting cash and debiting the bond payable account.